of all of the questions that we got on the website, probably uh, the greatest number of them involve the grip on the bar in various forms. The question is, is uh, asked where do, we, where do you grip the bar and associated questions would be, I've got tendonitis. What am I doing wrong? Where do I put the bar in terms of high bar, low bar squat, that sort of thing. This, you know, probably 20% of all the questions on the board deal with something like this. So we talked about making a video for a long time about this stuff. So I guess I got my arm twisted enough to where we're going to break down and go ahead and do it. It won't be the most exciting thing we've ever talked about, but hey, not my fault. All right. Now, grip serves a very, very important purpose in the squat, just like it does in the front squat. Really, it's not that much different. It serves to hold the bar in a position such that all of the weight of the bar is on the body, not the arms. Now, if you'll think about the front squat position, you're trapping the bar with your hand and elbow on the meat of the deltoid so that the weight of the load can be absorbed by the whole body. The same thing is true in a back squat. What we do on the back squat is we place the bar in a position such that it is the lowest point that it can stably be carried in a squat in such a way that the elbows and the wrist are not bearing the load, that the back is bearing the load. Now let's talk about the first point. Why do we want it the lowest we can get it? We want it down there low because of the effect that the grip produces on the diagnostic angles, the back angle, the hip angle, and the knee angle during the squat. And we've discussed that a million times elsewhere, so we're just going to talk about the bar placement itself. The, the lowest point that the bar can stably be carried on the back is in a position, Brian Fox is going to help us with this, in a position where the bar is sitting directly underneath the spine of the scapula. Now here's the scapula, okay? Put your arms up in kind of a squatty kind of a grip position. And put them down. I want you to notice that the scapula moves around. The, the scapula is an interesting piece of the skeleton in that the only point of articulation that it has with another bone is right here. With the acromion process, the clavicle or a, a articulates with that with a bunch of ligaments right like this, but this is the only place that the scapula actually is tied to any other part of the skeleton. It floats in a sock of muscle and fascia and it goes all over the place. And this works to our advantage when we, uh, when we press, for instance, because we can move the, the uh, scapula out of a position impingement quite easily at the top. It's not nailed to the ribs, in other words. So in this position, when we are, when we are look, uh, looking for the, the spine of the scapula, because in our seminars we will always tell people where to put the bar, because that's the first point that comes up in terms of how to do the correct back squat on Saturday morning, where do we place the bar? It goes directly below the spine of the scapula. And the spine of the scapula is right here. Now, most people, when they're trying to find the spine of the scapula, are going to reach around behind them like this, and they're going to feel medially for it. And this is probably the reason for a lot of this confusion. You can't really feel it medially. And if you do manage to feel it medially, it's all the way down here. But what we're feeling of in that position would be way down there. Now this would immediately produce an impression in his mind that the bar is supposed to be somewhere down here when it's not. Okay, if you get the bar too low on the back, too far below the spine of the scapula, the bar will not stay in place. That's what I mean by the lowest point. We can stably carry the thing. The spine of the scapula, for all intents and purposes, is found out here on the lateral side of the shoulder. Reach around and, and grab right there is what you should be feeling. Of. So the impression that you have of where the bar gets carried 
is going to be correct if you feel for the scapula way out here on the lateral aspect of the shoulder. That's what you'd be feeling right there. If you put the bar down here, like some people do, the bar will scoot down the back every rep because it's not being held up correctly. Here's what we want it to look like. This bunched up muscle right there that's going to eventually receive the bar here in just a second is the posterior deltoid. Okay? And if the bar is sitting at the base of the traps, as my buddy Wellborn likes to say, at the base of the traps or the top of the posterior deltoid, then the bar is going to be in a right place. Take your grip. Let's just investigate how this unfolds. You'll notice that Brian took a grip that he's already familiar with. Now he's going to set his hands in a position where the wrist is straight. A little bit of flexion there. Keep it straight right there like that. And you'll notice that he has placed the bar exactly where we referred to earlier. Right on top of the posterior delt. And this is directly underneath. And I'm, by that I mean that far below. Immediately underneath the spine of the scapula. It's buried in tissue now. The idea here is that the bar rests on top of the posterior deltoid and below the, the trap. Stand up real tall real quickly. You can see his trap bunched up there. And you can see also his bunched up posterior deltoid. Now, this is the correct position in terms of up and down the spine. This is the lowest place on the back that he can keep the bar during the set without having it move. In fact, one of the ways you know that the bar placement is correct is that the bar does not move during the set. If you have it too low, the bar will tend to scoot down the back during the set, and if it's too high, if it's up here on the traps, the tendency might be for the bar to, to ride up during the set. Now, if you place it in the high bar position right there, then it's stable, but that's not the way we squat. We want it down here like this in a nice, tight position. Now, notice that elbows up produces this contracted, bunched up, posterior deltoid belly. Elbows up. So the cue for carrying the bar in this position is elbows up. Also notice that his wrist is straight. If you can come around here, look at the position of the hand on the bar. You'll note that in this position no part of the hand or wrist is under the bar and no part of the elbow is under the bar. And that means that none of the structure here is intercepting any of the load of the bar. All of it is on the back. Now, some people teach this position. Note the difference. If you've got 600 pounds on your back in this position, some of that 600 pounds is being borne by the wrist and the elbow because compression is transmitting that force down that bony column to the elbow. This produces the classic elbow problems we talk about in the book. They are prevented by this grip. 600 pounds can be carried on the back, and he does it all the time, with elbows up so that all of the weight of the bar is on the back and none of the weight of the bar is on the wrists and elbows. So this is the idea here for the, for the, the correct position. We want it on the belly of the contracted posterior belt, below the traps, but not down too low. Brace it down too low. Some of you guys have a picture in your mind of this being the position. That's not right. You'll note that we've mashed some of the deltoid muscle belly down and the elbows have had to drop to accommodate that. There's the position. That's the correct grip. Okay? Right here. Now, stay the bar just a second. Come out from under here. And uh, let your shoulders relax just a second. Now, what about grip width on the bar? This is terribly important as well. Uh, Brian, take a wide grip. Wider than your normal grip and take the bar out of the right. Yeah, I did. Like that. You'll note that with this wide grip, 
this very wide grip. That some of this relaxes. Get a nice tight shot of this. Okay. Note the difference in appearance here than we saw earlier. Go ahead and narrow the grip. Note what happened. You clearly see that this muscle mass right under the bar now is tighter with a closer grip. So, what do you want in terms of your grip width? Well, you would like to have the narrowest grip you can possibly manage with your elbows up and your hands on top of the bar. Now, you'll also notice, while I'm thinking about this, note that all of his thumb is on top of the bar here. Thumbs are not wrapped around the bar. If you wrap your thumbs around the bar, look what happens. Immediately you introduce compression of the wrist into the mix. We don't want any wrist compression because that in turn creates compression down this bone here. Put it back up on top. Done correctly, the wrist and the metacarpals all line up with the forearm in a nice straight line. This will have the, the fat part of the thumb actually up here on top of the bar like this. But notice also the absence of wrist flexion. A lot of people tend to overdo the grip and do this and place the bar, uh, place rather the hand up on top of the bar and this is not correct either. Okay, that's not a nice tight interface between the hand and the shoulders. What essentially we are trying to do with this whole thing is raise the elbows up and jack the bar forward by putting pressure on the inside face of the palm. As the elbow goes up, the rotation goes forward and traps the bar very, very securely between the hands and the shoulders with the elbows and the wrists intercepting absolutely none of the load. And this is, this is the reason we, we want to carry the bar in this position. You want to manage the narrowest grip you can because the narrower you go, the tighter all of this muscle mass becomes and the better all of that muscle mass will be at carrying the weight of the bar. Instead of letting relaxed muscle collapse and the bar drop down and actually be resting on skeletal components, which you don't want, you want the muscle riding on nice tight bunched up muscle. The bar rather, riding on nice tight bunched up muscle. Okay, go ahead and rack it. Now, tendonitis, we hear about this all the time. Tendonitis is uh, probably the most common complaint we hear about in, a, in association with a low bar squat. This low bar position will produce tendonitis if you've got the bar in the wrong place. Um, it's normally associated with stuff like bending the wrist. Go ahead and do this thing wrong for me. Take the bar out with your thumbs around elbows down low and the bar too low on your back. Good. Note the compression. Gravity is what we deal with here. If there are 600 pounds on this bar and you've got a wrist, a thumb around, wrist underneath grip on the bar, then some aspect of this load is going to be transmitted down to your elbow right in through here. The ligament that holds the forearm assembly to the humerus is under a lot of shear stress in this particular situation. Not only that, the wrist here is under a lot of stress. All of this stress is going to have to be dealt with by the soft tissue because the bones are in compression only the length that they have to go to get to a soft tissue interface and that's going to be down the elbow. So you've got compression going down and now we've got some shear force taking place inside the elbow. We've also got a moment arm at the wrist. All of this tissue is going to be tightened up. Now in front that produces a lot of tension along the forearm flexors and this is the position that many, many people find inflamed. This flexor tendon insertion 
up here, origin rather, up here at the elbow. This point right in here. This is actually called golfer's elbow. This is tennis elbow. This is golfer's elbow. And golfer's elbow is the normal expression of this type of elbow tendonitis that results from this type of grip. It's all avoided by here and thumbs around at the top, neutralizing the effect of the bar on the arms. We would like to have all of the weight on the back right there, perfectly capable of dealing with as much weight as you can squat. But the more arm element you introduce into the, into the carrying of this load, the more problems you're going to have with your grip and with your elbows and shoulders and all of these structures that are involved in, at that point, handling some of that immense weight. We don't want any of it on the arms, we want all of it on the back. Okay, that's good. Let's see if I'm leaving here. Yeah, yeah. Send my contacts adjusted today. Uh, tendonitis, yes, movements, wide, narrow. I think that's probably close enough. You can go ahead and leave. Uh, most of the problems that we find with grip are associated with gripping bar incorrectly. You want a thumbs above, narrow grip, elbows are up, the weight off of all of the arms, all the wrists, all the elbows. You want the load on the back. You want it supported by the muscles that are quite capable of supporting it, the upper back muscles. Uh, one other thing I had made a mental note to mention. Yes, elbows dropping. When you drop elbows, and I'll just do this at this point. Here's the correct position. A lot of people come up out of the bottom of the squat, and they get to the top, and elbows drop. This is almost always associated. Watch the upper back with the thoracic flexion. Almost always, if you find that you are dropping the elbows on the way up out of the bottom of the squat or on the way down into the bottom of the squat, what you're going to find that associated with is a thoracic flexion, the loosening of the upper back. This changes the squat mechanics as the force transfer is expressed through the spine. Keep the elbows up and that keeps the upper back tight. Looking up is another confounding problem that we get with upper back tightness, but that's not really related to grip. When you drop your elbows and relax the elbows down, relax the wrists on the bar, you will be relaxing your upper back. And lots of problems arise as a result of having done that. I think that's about all I can think of. Uh, I hope this thing has been instructive to you. We get lots and lots of questions about this, and I'm sure I'll be answering more questions on the website. If we have to, we'll follow up with uh, uh, more answers as the questions come in. Thanks for watching.